All right, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put on one of these uh, X360 uh, run chips. Um, basically, just uh, putting some flux there on the spots on the board where I'm gonna wire up the NAND reader. And uh, put a little solder on there so that it goes in a little easier. And the video is sped up to 1.5 here, so it, so it won't be so long. All right, you're gonna see me plugging a USB here, so people that see this are gonna ask what the hell that thing is. All it is is a ground. That way, I ain't got a side of the ground on, so I just use the ground off the USB port. Oh, and by the way, the NAND reader is a uh, Optiplex, I believe it's called. I don't get asked questions about that. Also, what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to wire up this uh, NAND reader and we're going to dump the NAND. And then I'm going to solder the chip on there. And then in one video without altering it, I'm going to boot the thing and show you how good it works without having to jack off with wires and coil wires up and all the rest of the stuff. So here I'm going to dump the NAND. Just using NAND Pro here, I just got some shortcuts made as well. And we're going to write the universal ECC. By the way, this is a Trinity board we're doing here. Alright, now we're going to wire the chip up here. I try to keep the video constant so it ain't like I'm breaking it up, but I had to do certain places to show the stuff on the PC. So now most of the time people leave their NAND uh, reader wired on and they wear the chip on and they make their image and all that blah, 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 other shit. I don't do it that way. I just remove the NAND flasher now because it's already got the ECC on it so I don't need it anymore. So now I'm going to wire this chip up here. And uh, by the way, uh, I pre-wired this thing and uh, put the capacitor on it for a training, but I put a 220 on it, PF. And it does boot, it booted Axel with like within three glitches, you'll see here. But I changed it in the middle of one of the videos to a 270 PF, which made it boot like within two glitches. So it's, that's, you'll see what, when it changes. Uh, I'm just basically wearing the wires up here. I know this chip looks ghetto as hell, but it works. So I'm going to wire this thing up, and I'm not going to cut the video, I'm going to spin the camera around, put it on the, on the board, and you're going to see axle boot. That's without doing anything else. I don't have wires coiled up underneath the board, I don't have to flip any switches, I don't have to do anything else. I don't got to take it on a date and buy it dinner or nothing just to get it to boot axle. I just wired it on there and go. These things are very new friendly, by the way, and they boot great. So. Another thing too is if anybody's going to do any of this stuff, don't go to Radio Shack and buy a, a soldering iron. All those things are is glorified wood burners, man. You need to get something with some heat and crank it all the way up. See how fast these wires are going on? The reason you're burning pads off on these boards is because you've got a glorified wood burner and you're trying to solder with the dang thing. You're not using flux and you're holding your soldering iron too long and you're burning the pads off. All right, so watch this. I just wired it up. Almost got a quick view of me there, but 
I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to boot axle. And by the way, these are only for the slims. I don't think they have. They don't have any out for the fats yet. And the Corona boots just as fast as this. There's a trinity when you're using these chips. As long as you preset the chip up before you do it. Alright, there's me hitting the power. Like I said, I didn't like how fast this one booted. So I did change capacitor here later on. But that one capacitor hanging off the side there, that's a 220. Uh, yeah, actually, I found that the 270 works better. Get to boot within one or two glitches. Alright, so there's our axle. All I'm doing there is getting the IP address. I got an Ethernet cable hooked into it. I'm going to open up J Runner here, which is this is the only thing that I find any useful out of J Runner is this little device here where you can scan for the IP and get your CPU key. Other than that, I don't use this is the only thing I use J Runner for is just getting the uh, CPU keys. I don't know how many of you people have tried the RGH a console, being new to it and not really experienced with it, but you're sitting here playing with wire links and coiling wires up and you're not look how quick I got that going just by wiring the chip on and booting it. I didn't do anything else. No, that's it. Right here I'm making the free boot image by the way. And then I'm going to copy the UP flash to a U USB stick. Now this part of the video here skips a beat. I didn't show writing it. All I did is stick the stick in and boot it X and let X will write it to it. But after it was done doing it, I changed the capacitor. You notice the capacitor is different now. It's round instead of square. So now we've got free boot written to it. Watch how fast it boots now. That's with the capacitor changed. That time it went in two glitches. I think I booted a couple more times here and I think it goes in one or two glitches. I mean that's not even adjusted anything, you know. There is adjustments on this, but man as long as it counts of boots within three glitches, you know, if you walk into your living room and you grab your controller off your entertainment center and you hit the power button, time you got your fat ass back to the couch to play, it's going to be booted in three glitches anyways, you know what I'm saying? The reason I made this video is to show how easy it would be for someone who hasn't got a lot of experience and that they could do it. It's just a noob friendly chip I guess you could call it. But yeah, I think that one went in one glitch there. I'm not sure. I wasn't watching it. I did uh, four Trinity so far and three of them wanted the 270 capacitor. And one of them wanted the 220 capacitor. I did two Corona so far, and uh, they boot just as good as this. And then the chip pretty much comes set up for a Corona. Only reason you gotta change stuff is for if you're gonna do a, do a train with you. I made a little uh, tutorial too. I might post it with uh, this video, showing how to set the chip up before you even wire it on.
and I did some reading. Supposedly, you can get these things to boot within one glitch. That's if you keep messing with the settings, because the settings on this you can uh, you can actually change the timing within eight degrees. You can change the timing forward four degrees or backwards four degrees, and you can change the width of the timing. But I guess my videos gone are done here.